Welcome to Satsang. What a beautiful beginning of the new year. To be able to be here on on these sacred banks of Mother Ganga. In the in the lap of the Himalayas in this land of transformation to be able to begin our new year here. It's such a gift and such a blessing. So our first question is as always one coming from our beautiful family from around around the world who are joining us online, who can't be here physically, but are joining us through YouTube or Facebook or whatever channel they're connecting with us from. And then after this one question, we'll open it to any questions that anyone here has. English may be pooch sakte, Hindi may be pooch sakte, hai matlab jo aapko comfortable feel lagta hai usme, aap pooch sakte. How do I live a more conscious life in what I wear, buy, eat, consume, and do? Beautiful. And one of my favorite, favorite topics. Consciousness, which is something that we, that we focus on in our spiritual life. Connecting with not just the physical body, not just the fluctuation of the chemicals and electricity in my brain that we call thoughts or emotion, but actually connecting with consciousness. That's, that's what we do on our spiritual path and our spiritual practice. It's what meditation helps us do. It's what prayer, mantra, jap, seva, all of these things help us do. But that consciousness isn't supposed to stay only on my cushion or on my mat or only when I'm meditating, then I'm conscious. When I'm praying, then I'm conscious. But the rest of the time, we'll throw month or month, you know, we say. But the goal of a spiritual life is how to bring that consciousness into every minute, into every moment, into every decision. How do I make every choice one in consciousness? So uh, the first piece is actually the simplest but really the most important is just quite literally, when we meditate, we are drawing our awareness to a single point usually, maybe our breath, maybe a mantra, maybe a candle flame, whatever it is, we are drawing our awareness to that point. And every time that our mind wanders, We bring it back. This is what we learn in our meditative practice. Otherwise, a thought comes and we end up riding that thought into God knows where. So I'm meditating and suddenly, suddenly I smell the the neighbors are brewing coffee. And the mind goes, oh, I could really use a cup of coffee. 
Oh, but no, I gave up chai and coffee because I made this promise to God that if my child got into the university they wanted to go to, to put a ex saltak na me coffee piungi na me chai piungi, to me coffee to chordia, chordia. Oh ho ho, I remember now that trip I took to Paris, sitting on the banks of the Seine, on the banks of the river, drinking beautiful cappuccino. Right now, I was supposed to be meditating. All that happened was I noticed the smell of coffee. Or make kaha se kaha ponchke? Sitting on the Champs Elysees in Paris, drinking cappuccino, God knows how many number of years ago. Once we notice that that's what the mind does, we become able to just bring it back. So I notice the smell of coffee. <clears throat> and immediately I bring my awareness back to my breath, back to the mantra. I don't allow my awareness to get hijacked by every passing smell or sound or thought or itch. Oh my God, what if there are ants all over me? What if I'm getting bit by a mosquito? Maybe then I'll get malaria or a dengue. Right? You see, just one little sensation of a bit of itching on the knee lands me in my mind at death's door in the hospital. This is the nature of the mind. Now, when you think about our decisions in our day-to-day -day life, how do we live them consciously? Well, the first is the exact same as what we do in meditation. We make sure that we are aware that when I go to a restaurant, or I go to a department store, or I go to a grocery store, or I go to Amazon.com to buy something, to order something, that I am present, that I'm fully aware of actually what I need to buy, what I want to eat, not on autopilot, not run by desires, not run by random thoughts of a TV commercial that I saw where the woman eating the hamburger was, looked so beautiful and she seemed so happy and so cello, I'll have a hamburger because I also want to look so beautiful and happy. Not that. Not that unconscious hijacked of my awareness. Because none of us do that consciously. If I'm really conscious, I'm not going to say, oh, I want to look just like the person in the TV commercial. We understand what the commercial is. We're not going to base our lives on it. It's only when we are unconscious, functioning on this autopilot level that we make those sorts of decisions. It's also when we start buying things that we don't need. Just because inside me I'm feeling empty or I'm feeling bored or I'm feeling depressed or I'm feeling less than compared to other people around me. And so I start buying more and more, more and more to feel full inside. This is unconscious. So the first thing we do is we simply bring our awareness to that moment. What do I really need? What am I shopping for? Who is shopping? Because this is also critical. We lose who am I. Who is doing the shopping and what are my, what are my needs, what are my values, what are my ethics? So that we're present because you open a menu and there's 200 things you can order. You go to a grocery store, there's 2,000 things you can buy. You go to Amazon, there's 200,000 things you can buy. 
So it's very easy to get caught up. So first we stay aware. And once we are aware, then we are able to recognize the impact of the decisions that we make on our life. We speak and hear so much about karma and destiny and pre, what's been predetermined. Well, my choices, what I'm buying, what I'm doing, what I'm wearing, what I'm eating, are determining my own physical health, my emotional health, and the health of our planet. So, for example, let's take eating. Well, most of us eat for reasons that have nothing to do with nourishing our body. Okay? Most of us eat because we're bored, because we're frustrated, or because it's just time to eat, whether I'm hungry or not. Kanika time. A lot of times we eat because we think food is love. When we were young, we were given food when we were unhappy, cookies and cakes and whatnot. And so now when I'm upset as an adult, I do the same thing. So I eat unconsciously. The dilemma with that is not only is my health, physical, and emotional being impacted, but it's impacting our planet. So, for example, meat, animal agriculture, hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken McNuggets, the, the cows, the pigs, the chickens who are being raised to be food. Not only is it bad for our health, you don't need me to tell you about fat and cholesterol and blood pressure and whatnot, whatnot, but it's actually the single greatest cause of climate change. It's one of the greatest causes of environmental destruction, of world hunger. The amount of grain means wheat, rice, soy, corn, that goes into the production of one pound of beef is the same amount of grain from which you could get 16 pounds of bread or rice or pasta. 16 to 1. So every single time that I choose to eat meat, I am literally saying, I deserve the food for 15 other people. Let them starve because I want to eat a hamburger. Now that's unconscious because consciously none of us would say, oh yeah, those starving children, we all have some amount of compassion within us, some amount of caring within us, We would never steal bread out of the hands of a starving child on the side of the road. Of course, soch ne sante. But when we eat meat, that's exactly what we're doing. We actually produce enough grain, wheat, rice, corn, soy, to feed more than 10 billion people much more than the number of people who actually live on earth. And yet every day, tens of thousands of people are dying of starvation because we are cycling our grain into meat instead of into bread and chapatis and rice and pasta to actually feed people. So that's just one example. Another example with it, the amount of water. We know that we are at a global water crisis precipice. Just go to Google, go anywhere where they're sharing news. We are on the verge of a global water catastrophe. Hundreds of millions of water refugees 
will have to leave their homes over the next couple of decades, not hundreds of years, decades. As sea levels rise because of climate change, as our drinking water gets depleted, as the drinking water gets polluted, hundreds of millions of people will become refugees. The United Nations predicts that by 2040, we will only have half the drinking water that we need. And India, by the way, is on track to be there by 2030. It's basically tomorrow. Jitna jal jruri hogi, peene ke liye, khane banane ke liye, keit sinchne ke liye, itne aada hoga apne paas. And yet, the amount of water that goes into the production of a pound of meat, so you and a couple friends sit down to hamburgers. That's the same amount of water that you use in bathing every day for six months. Six months bathing worth of water goes into one meal of hamburgers, which means if we care about water on earth, kya ham che mene tak bina snan jine ke liye Obviously not. But if we eat hamburgers, literally we would have to not bathe for six months to offset the water usage. Kuch lo kehte hai ki chalo mein maas ne khati hun, mein chicken khati hun. Well, chicken is about one third. So you'd have to not bathe for two months to offset the amount of water that goes into the production of chicken. So, when we speak about conscious living, it means I am aware when I am ordering in a restaurant, I am aware I'm not just ordering a hamburger or chicken McNuggets. I am ordering a ripple impact upon the planet of hunger, of death, of poverty, of environmental destruction. So we choose consciously. This information, it's not meant to make you feel guilty. It's what makes us feel empowered. Wow. Every meal I have the ability to make that kind of a ripple impact. What we wear, what we buy. Well, everything is produced somewhere in a factory. Chahe jo kapre hum Chahe jo mobile hum use karte hai, jo bhi hai. Jute pente hai, whatever it is. Our clothes, our shoes, all of our items are produced somewhere. If our only goal is more, 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 cheaper, 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 well, that's what will be provided. The law of supply and demand says that what people want, I will provide. You want cheaper tika. In order to produce things more cheaply, it means as a factory owner, I have to cut corners. So all of that treatment of our waste, all of that clean management that we could have invested in, I'm going to cut corners. Instead, I will check the price of so rupiya, hazar rupiya de dungi. Taki, he gives me a pass rather than actually taking care of the waste that's polluting the air, polluting the water, polluting the ground. Or I'm going to run my factory with children and women who I can pay next to nothing to, keep them as slaves, work them in sweatshops, unsafe conditions so that I can produce more, 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 cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. So, jab hum kapre kharidne ja rahe hai, ya jo bhi kharidne ja rahe hai, hume ye dekhna hai ki kaun si company ka saman kharid rahe hai. 
विच कंपनी आर वी बाइंग फ्रॉम क्योंकि हमको लगता है कि हम वोटिंग एक बार करते हैं व्हेन वी गो टू द इलेक्शन दैट वी वोट वी वोट इन आवर स्टेट इलेक्शन वी वोट इन आवर लोकल इलेक्शन बट वी एक्चुअली वोट Every time we spend money, we are voting for equality, for safety, for health, for the women and children of our planet. If I'm putting my money in a company that is running sweatshops in India, in Bangladesh, in other countries, where women and children are suffering and dying or a company that's producing cotton for example with toxic chemicals as fertilizers as pesticides taki kisan walon ko cancer ho raha hai unki bachon ko birth defects ho raha hai because of the sprays because of the chemicals wo hinsa hai it's violence and when we speak about karma as any ki maine apne haath se unko nahi mara so i am absolved the fruits of karma it's not just what i actually do with my own hands it's what i'm doing indirectly also so if i'm supporting companies engaging in behaviors that are having ripple impacts of violence of harm to our environment to the farmers to the women to the children to the future generations their blood is on our hands and i know it's not easy to hear but if we want to live conscious lives as puja swami ji always says spirituality is not a weekend business it's not just jab mera paas thoda sa samay ho then i am spiritual Spirituality is something that infuses our every minute and every moment. So when I learn yoga and I learn about yam and niyam ahinsa satya asteya This is not just in my yoga class. This is actually in my life. and so we actually have the opportunity again a guilty feel cardinally and i this is actually to give us the opportunity to live yoga and live spirituality and live consciousness every minute nahi to log khate ho mera paas time nahi hai dhyan karne ki time nahi hai i don't have time to meditate well this actually enables us to turn our meal time our grocery shopping time our errands time into our spiritual practice and the good thing is these days you can find out everything online there's so many ways to find out which companies for example are testing on animals if you're a woman do you wear makeup do we all we use shampoo we use soap we use sunscreen well a lot of companies actually test these products by smearing them in the eyes of animals check karne ke liye ki kya jalan hoga agar mera shampoo aankh mein jaate to jalan hoga ki nahi wo insaan ke upar test to nahi kar sakte so they test it on animals and they're burning the eyes of animals burning the skin of animals we don't need to do it anymore these days with computers with artificial intelligence we're able to test everything we don't need to be harming and killing animals in our laboratories to make sure that our lipstick is safe or that our shampoo is safe You can find out all this information online lists of which products 
test on animals, which products use animals in their product, which, which companies have sweatshops in developing nations where women and children are subjugated to oppression, and which companies are organic and fair trade, their workers are paid good wages, safe working conditions, clean for the air, clean for the soil. These lists are available. So it's up to us. Do we want to live consciously or not? So many people say all the time, Achad, Ganga should be clean. Ganga should be clean, right? Kurt Hamek, Swach Ganga, Rally, Kardne Jayengi, to Sabi Ayengi. Right? Agar me kongi, chalo, kal suve. Everybody should join us on the banks of Ganga, ek rally hogi. Save Ganga kiliye. To Sabi Ayengi, hena. And yet, if you look around, what material are your handbags made of? What material are your shoes made of? What material are your belts made of or your car seat? In so many cases, it's leather. And yet, while on the one hand, we're ready to go to a rally and yell for clean Ganga, we're actually putting our rupees into the companies that are actually polluting Ganga the worst. The tanneries are some of the worst polluters of Ganga. And so this is just a shift in consciousness. Sabi chatehi ki Ganga saaf ho, nirmal ho, aviral ho. But agar hum sabi log, leather shoes, leather handbags, leather car seats, kharidne ja rahe. So they're all making money, why will they stop? Why will they change? And yet we learn, ah, I have the power to bring about change, not just Ganga Katatpe Kariho Ke Ek Sign Laker, Ya Koi Slogan Bolenge, but actually by putting my money where my mouth is, by voting with my rupees for a clean Ganga. So it's a beautiful way. I've just given you maybe, I don't know, five, ten different ways that every day, chahe dhyan karne ki time ho kane, you are able to actually live every minute consciously, mindfully, and that becomes your spiritual practice. Dhyan could be karna chaye. We still should be meditating. But this gives us the opportunity to meditate every minute of the day. If anyone here has a question, I'm happy to take them. Just raise your hand, he'll bring you the mic. Namaste, Didi Pranam. Namaste, Pranam. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is about expectations. So it's always said that, you know, uh, miseries come from expectations. Dukh expectations se aata hai. But when you are in a social world, you're living with your family, expectations are bound to happen. Yes. How do you cut down on expectations and thereby, you know, reduce your own uh, misery. Uh, that is one. And uh, the second question is, uh, this is about uh, some sort of guilty feeling I get, say for example, uh, you talked about being conscious. So, say my, I'm going in a restaurant, I'm spending money over there, right? And on the other hand, there are uh, people who are deprived. So at times, not always, <laughs> at times I get this feeling that, you know, I'm going there, okay, I'm earning, I'm spending money over there. Is it, is it wrong to have those kinds of 
desires like you know spending money on oneself okay. and beautiful gaining some happiness <laughs> beautiful to sabse pehle expectations dekho hum bina expectation ji nahi sakte we cannot live without any expectations we all expect that this hall was constructed properly or ki chat abhi girne wali nahi hai nahi to hum andar nahi baithe right if we didn't have the expectation that the contractor did a good job and the roof is safe we would not sit in this hall if i don't have the expectation that when i wake up in the morning my home will still be there my loved ones will still be there my body will still be there alive healthy I would never go to sleep. Need would never come. We have to have some degree of expectation. If you are married for example, itna expectation hona chahiye ki raat ko jab sone jayenge bistar pe ki wo aapko chaku se nahi marenge raat ke beech mein. Right? We have to expect that our husband or wife is not going to stab us in our bed in the night nahi to no one would be able to go to sleep ever so we have to have some basic expectations the dilemma comes when i have an attachment to those expectations bearing fruit so for example I expect that people should treat me lovingly. If I am nice to people, they should be nice back. If I am caring and loving, they should be caring and loving. The expectation itself is not the problem. The problem is when the expectation is not fulfilled. Jab mai bahut pyari hun kisi ke saath aur wo mera saath pyar se deal nahi kar they're mean to me they insult me they betray me the expectation is not fulfilled but i also have an attachment that it must be fulfilled and then i am depressed and miserable that's the problem with expectation it's not the expectation itself that's the problem it's the attachment to it being fulfilled that i have an expectation and i also feel 200% entitled ki jo mai expect karti hun wahi hona chahiye and then jab nahi hota then i am depressed and frustrated so the way around that is have your expectation no problem but recognize that the fulfillment of that expectation is not in your hands which means ki kabhi kabhi jo aap expect karte hain wohi hoga lekin kabhi kabhi jo aap expect karte hain wo nahi hoga and when what i expect does not happen i need to be able to say chalo i guess it wasn't in god's will I need to be able to stay grounded and anchored and allow that divine flow to flow without my depression and frustration. Otherwise every time my expectation is not fulfilled I am depressed. So that is why we're taught accept more expect less. So to the extent that you can especially from friends especially from family members from colleagues from neighbors people you have to interact with on a daily basis try to expect as little as possible from them love them have high hopes no problem with that 
but don't expect in a way that when they don't act accordingly, you are depressed. Then what you've done is you've put your happiness, your peace, hooked into someone else's drama. And that's when we become miserable. And then the second question about feeling guilty for spending money when so many people have nothing. The answer to this is a balance. Because my guilty conscience is going to ruin my life. And we are not put here that our lives should be ruined with guilt. And once you start having a habit of guilt, then you actually feel guilty about so much. Then it's not just Ki, these poor people or these hungry people. Then you start to feel guilty about everything. Well, team office me. Well, shayad me thoda sa or kar sakti thi. Lekin itna to nahi kia or karna chahiye tha. I should have helped people more. Now, it's beautiful to introspect, to reflect on how was I an instrument of love and peace and service? And how maybe could I have been a better instrument of love and peace and service? That's beautiful. It helps us grow. It helps keep tomorrow I will be a better instrument. But that guilty feeling eats us up inside. And so this is where at the end of every day, we offer to the divine the choices that we made that were in alignment with being an instrument of love, an instrument of peace, an instrument of service. And those that were not what Pooja Swamiji calls our plus points and minus points. We offer them all to God. So that we don't go to sleep feeling guilty. But that guilt is also a catalyst. Guilt should not be ignored. Because what guilt reminds us is, I have a choice. Ajmane. Itne sare rupiya kharch kiya bina matlab. Jab usi restaurant ke bahar itni log hai, jin ke paas kuch bhi nahi hai. Now, it doesn't mean never celebrate, never splurge. There is no teaching in our spirituality that says, do not enjoy your life. Everyone should be a sannyasi. Kahi asi ne li kawai. Do not enjoy your life. Do not have nice things. But that guilt is a bit of a, you can think of it as like, you know, we ring the bell. It's kind of like the bell ringing inside you that says, Ki, jo me abhi karne jari hi hun. Or jo me ne abhi kia ta. What I'm doing maybe isn't exactly right. Maybe I could make a better choice. And what you'll find interestingly is the joy that you get from spending your money on a nice restaurant, on nice new clothes, is very short lived. Tori dared kili up, enjoy karte. But the joy that you get from taking that money and using it to feed others is so much more. You think, Ki chalo mera paas hazar rupiya hai. Maan nahi jega. I could take that thousand rupees, or let's say five thousand rupees. I've got five thousand rupees. Ya me paanch hazar rupiya. Ek five star hotel mein ja ke mere liye aur meri ek dost ke liye bhojan fancy dinner we have 
Or I spend a hundred rupees on my dinner someplace else. Jaha puri ek buriya satali to mil jayega. And then I spend 4,900 rupees on thalis for 49 other people. Or jo daba jaha se mene apni so rupee ki thali liya. Usi daba mein I have bought food for all of these people lining on the streets. Daba wali kush ho gaya. Right? Pachas logon ko khane kilaya. All these people are happy. Now you think, how long is the happiness of your fancy meal going to last? And how long is the happiness of spending your evening feeding 49 other people? So that, that guilt, don't, don't let it eat you up. Don't let it tell you you're a bad person. It's just harmful. But let that guilt be a little ringing of the bell inside. Ki kya mera koi option hai? Kya koi alternative hai? Kya ek panch hazar shal karidne ke bajai ya panch lakh shal? Panch al rupiah matlab ki shal. Karidne ke bajai. I can buy a few hundred rupee shawl. And then I can buy shawls for so many. Right? Though spirituality doesn't say don't have. It doesn't say deprive yourself. But it says if you've got this much money, whatever the amount is, whether you've got 5,000, 50,000, 5 lakhs, however much you have, Rather than thinking, Tika, itana hai mera paas, what can I buy for myself with all this money? Think about out of this money, how can I do something for myself also that I need or that I want and serve all of these other people? And then you'll find that that happiness is actually so much deeper. And it lasts so much longer. Beautiful. Beautiful. Have a, a beautiful rest of your evening. A beautiful morning and day to our family. Joining us from all over the world. And so, so much love to you all in this, this new year. <laughs>